You're plugged into G4's video game mashup. Now up, X-Play. Today on X-Play. Vampires. Pirates. And very old men. Thank you! Spoil your hedgehog. This is terrible! It's game time. I don't want my brother walking out of that toilet with just his d in his hands. Sessler, Morgan Webb. Prepare to be reviewed. Prepare to be reviewed. This is X Play. X -Play. X -Play. Hello and welcome to X-Play. Morgan Webb is on assignment in the Middle East, so Christian Holt, the host of Cheat, is here with us to be the girl. Two X chromosomes, baby, and don't you forget it. But just because Morgan's gone and I have a sore throat doesn't mean we're going to stop bringing you the high-quality, low-fat video game reviews you've come to expect from us. Reviews of games like 1701 AD bring all the boredom and land grabbing of colonialism to your PC. And Sonic the Hedgehog takes the Xbox 360 back to the glory days of Sega. We can only pray an updated Echo the Dolphin will be next. And later in the show, we review Tony Hawk Downhill Jam with the answer to the enticing question. What's a skateboarding game going to be like on the Wii? But we begin with one of the ancient and revered gaming franchises. Since 1986, Castlevania has been cranking out vampire games for nearly every gaming system known to man or elf. Here's our review of Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. For 20 years, the Castlevania franchise brought us one of the most fun and challenging platformers known to the gaming realm. And sticking to its traditional whip-wielding and platforming prowess comes Castlevania Portrait of Ruin for the Nintendo DS. Following the events of the 1994 Sega Genesis title, Castlevania Bloodlines, Portrait of Ruin puts us in control of two teenage virgin vampire slayers. Jonathan, Showtime! The inheritor of the Belmont family whip, and his lady friend, Charlotte. Here I am! A spell-casting harlot who's armed with a book. Yes, a book. So as the story goes, Castle Dracula has appeared yet again, and it's up to the upstart vampire slayers to take on the Belmont tradition by whipping, slashing, and casting their way through Dracula's labyrinthine gauntlet of guano. But instead of encountering old Drac, our heroes encounter another vampire, an artistic vampire painter named Bronner. This is art! Who looks like Nosferatu, but has the talents of Bob Ross. Except Bronner doesn't paint happy little bushes. A painting of the soul! Turns out that Bronner took over Dracula's dwelling and transformed it into an art museum by hanging up portraits that draw power from the castle. To stop Bronner and his cast of undead curators, Jonathan and Charlotte will have to enter Bronner's portraits of evil imagery, which will take them on an art history journey to the Egyptian era, medieval era, and the circus era. Let's play! Is that boss a giant orgy ball of naked men? Speaking of unconventional lifestyles, Portrait of Ruin also offers a new and improved partner system. Jonathan! Charlotte! By screaming each other's names, the teen couple take turns exploring the vestibules of Dracula's castle. These friends with benefits can switch off, battle together, use each other as a stepping stool, as well as team up for a devastating combo attack. Jonathan! Charlotte! Jonathan! Charlotte! Uh, guys, devastating combo attack? Unlike previous Castlevanias, Portrait of Ruin lets you hold on to multiple sub-weapons. And there's a wide variety to choose from, like grenades, paper airplanes, and yes, cream pot. Yeah. As opposed to its DS predecessor, Dawn of Sorrow, this game lacks any kind of touchscreen feature whatsoever. But let's face it, drawing seals was about as fun as it sounds. I have more fun drawing my game save avatar. There isn't much innovation in Portrait of Ruin, but it does offer an online co-op mode, which kind of sucks because you have to share one life bar and magic bar. Luckily, the game is lengthy, addicting, and features some cool unlockables. Overall, Portrait of Ruin may not reinvent the whip, but it is the most refined handheld installment of the series. Jonathan! Charlotte! Jonathan! Charlotte! Oh, will you two shut the hell up? Whoa! 
Castlevania Portrait of Ruin gets four orgy zombie balls out of five. My grandmother was Castlevania, and she used to tell me lots of stories about the whip braiding festivals in the old country. Then she'd give me unbaptized baby cookies and sing me the aria of sorrow as I went to sleep. You may be creepier than Morgan. To entirely change the subject, do you want to know what I love, Adam? Puppies? No. The numbers one through four, as featured in this Schick Top Four. It's X-Play's Top Four, presented by Schick Quattro. Top four games for JFK assassination conspiracy theorists. Number four, Battlefield Vietnam. When searching for the truth, all roads lead to here. Vietnam, damn that war. Did JFK want to end the Vietnam War or escalate it? Who's to say? We'll never know. Number three, The Godfather. To think that the alleged mafia had nothing to do with JFK's assassination is like saying the Godfather game is just a cheap GTA knockoff with a 70s movie connection. But it does have Abe Vigoda, and if you really want to unravel the web of deception and lies behind JFK's demise, it all starts with Vigoda. You might be able to take the gun behind it. Number two, Cuban Missile Crisis, The Aftermath. Was the Cuban Missile Crisis the last straw for JFK? Did it anger Castro so much that he dared to do the unthinkable? Are the answers in this video game? Or are there only more questions? Number one, destroy all humans too, make war, not love. To say it was the communists, the mafia, the military, and Vagoda all joined together to pull off the conspiracy would be too simple. We have another answer aliens. They didn't want JFK coming to the moon and discovering their secret moon base. You killed my cosmonaut! They sure did use the numbers one through four in that countdown. Good job, Schick. Nobody removes hair from men's faces like you do, Schick. Speaking of numbers, can I mention lately that the dog whisper is still beating us on the iPod top podcast list? We're so very close, America. Please download us. We need your help! In a moment, 1701 AD on X-Play. Listen to me. All I needed was a ship. <laughs> this Friday. There's a body in his garage. This is not a game anymore. He's hiding something, we know that. And he knows that we know that. Welcome <laughs> to Disturbia. Rated PG-13 starts Friday. Rated Teen. There's something about the freshness of Ireland that brings out the lasses. Now it comes in a body wash from Irish Spring. Smell like you're worth exploring. New, long-lasting Irish Spring body wash. All the freshness of Ireland, bottled. If you're looking to refinance, cash out equity, or purchase a new home, you can count on Ditech to provide you with a great rate and outstanding personal service. Call us now at 1-800-71-FIX to lock in a low fixed rate and get your conditional loan approval decision right on the phone in minutes. With Ditech, you can close your loan in 30 days or less. And since Ditech is backed by GMAC, you can be confident every step of the way. Log on or call 1-800-71-FIXED. Corn-fed and delicious. It's Adam Sessler and Kristen Holt. Welcome back to X-Play. We've misplaced Morgan Webb, so until we remember what we last did with her, I'm here to provide needed class, style, and estrogen to this sad but adorable little video game review show. 
Sadness, adorableness. You say those words and I think of one thing, resource transportation games. Not because they have anything to do with sadness or adorableness, it's just that whatever you say to me, I'm probably gonna end up thinking about resource transportation games because I like them. So to satiate me for a few moments, let's watch our review of 1701 AD. As Americans, we often take our luxuries for granted. Indoor plumbing, fresh produce, Everything you see is fresh as can be. And the G4 network. But before we could enjoy these amenities in the comfort of our climate-controlled duplexes, our ancestors had to get their slaughter on. Or, as they called it back then, get their trading agreement on. The Tonka is ready to sign the paper that you call trading agreement. Now available for the PC, 1701 AD is a celebration of the humble beginnings of Western civilization. The story begins with your character pitching his grandiose dreams to the queen. He promises riches, he promises glory, and he only needs one thing. All I needed was a ship. And he gets it just like that? Hey, I want a ship. Viewers, write in and get me a ship. Anyway, turns out that he gets the ship, but the queen is still not entirely sold on the idea. Know that we have doubts about your success. And so, gamers must work fast to create a colony suitable for Her Majesty. And before L. Ron Hubbard gets angry. <laughs> Admittedly, this title's predecessor, 1503 AD, is a more challenging sim. There are, however, significant improvements found in this version. First of all, the graphics are stunning, showcasing highly detailed environments and plenty of harpooned whales. The road system is also improved, eliminating much of the sprawl found in 1503 AD. And there's even an alert feature that's eerily reminiscent of AOL. You have sighted new land. Unfortunately, the military component won't be winning any awards. Thus, if they want supplies that are unavailable in their colony, gamers will need to barter with their stereotypically ethnic neighbors. Welcome to the Imperial Trading Post. Speaking of which, perhaps a special award should be given to 1701 AD for some of the most stereotypical voiceover acting ever. In fact, let's immortalize it with a song. How, how, how nice. Full of, full of, full of redskins. Stop, 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 pale face. You are invoking great mischief. Shoddy voiceover work aside, this is still a very solid sim. Its depth will keep gamers entertained and its presentation will keep them mesmerized, even if it does pay homage to L. Ron Hubbard. And that's why 1701 AD set sail for a four out of five. I love this island. While the game is full of weird racial stereotypes, it's still really fun to play. I enjoy any city simulation game that demands you get your citizens drunk and bring them smokes. It's a lot like spending time with my mom. I only wish the game demanded you smuggle cocaine onto the island and produce stylish vice cops to stop the cocaine. You really do miss Philip Michael Thomas, don't you? More than I can say. Moments away, it's Sonic the Hedgehog on X-Play. His power can change time. This is a Morgan Minute. The retro game revolution has begun, but if you didn't play the game in 1984, don't buy it now. There's no reason to play old games unless you played them when they first came out. But the Space Invaders was awesome, you said. Well, it was, because you remember playing it when it was, in fact, new and amazing. Now I'd be shocked if it held your attention for 15 minutes. Hey, I'm not immune or anything. I bought Wii Play just for combat. They call it tanks, but it's the same thing. I mean, I already had enough controllers. I spent $50 to play a game for the Atari because combat comes from my happy place. You know, the games have little value for someone who didn't grow up on them, and they will never be as fun as they were. I mean, the sad truth is, is you can't go home again, even for $50. You're in G4's video game mashup. Now, X-Play. Brought to you by Doritos. Two new flavors, one survives. You decide. Doritos presents two new flavors. One sticks around, one's going down. Fight! <laughs> Smoking cheddar barbecue is bringing serious crumbs. Oh yeah! Oh wow! Why Nacho's getting his cheese on? Oh, below the logo! Someone's about to get barbecue. They're fighting for their lives. Two new flavors. One survives. You decide.
Earn a college degree in the U.S. Navy. And proudly display your school colors. Navy, accelerate your life. My family is amazed with what I've done. Going to school and taking care of them. They always tell me how proud they are. My name is Mark Dong. I'm a senior engineering technician for a civil engineering consulting firm. I help the engineers with the graphics of their designs. I love my job because they're such good teamwork. When I went to China to get married, I made the decision to go back to school. I know that without my education, I wouldn't be where I am right now. The faculty and staff at ITT Tech were very helpful in my development. In fact, I still maintain contact with some of my instructors. I just love to watch my two boys grow up, and I want to give them the best that I can. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Call 1-800-327-1172 or visit us on the web. Get an education that can help you reach your goals. ITT Tech has information on financial aid programs for those who qualify. Call 1-800-327-1172 today. We just got a new car. Good time to look at new car insurance. and. We went with Progressive, saving like 400 a year. Uh, but what really impressed me was, they actually gave me the rates to the other big companies. I was not expecting that. I mean, that kind of honesty is... <laughs> oh, did you have anything to do with this? No. Right. Get our rates plus competitors at Progressive.com. Honest. Progressive. Saving hundreds is just the beginning. I uh, signed up for car insurance on Progressive.com. I saved money, which was great, but they also have these local response vehicles. And if you're in an accident or need an estimate or whatever, a progressive guy will come to you. And they're all over. I am a musician who's on the road a lot, so it's pretty cool that they'll come to me if my van, you know, gets pummeled by adoring fans. Or if I hit a pole. Progressive. Saving hundreds is just the beginning. Came out of nowhere. From Hawaii. Sweetened by the sun, it's Adam Sessler and Kristen Holt. Welcome back to X-Play. Morgan Webb's unit in the California Viking National Guard was called into active duty, so she's off in the North Atlantic, raiding monasteries and drinking blood. Kristen Holt is subbing in. That's me, Kristen Holt, the host of Cheat. The golden age of home console video games was a pitched battle between adorable platformer stars. While Nintendo rested on the thick and sturdy mustache of Mario, Sega staked its bet on a fast and wily mammal named Sonic the Hedgehog. While Sega's consoles may have failed, we've still got a lot of hedgehog love. Here's our review of Sonic the Hedgehog for the 360. That's a pretty snazzy performance there. Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog is back and taking his first sneaker-laden steps on the Xbox 360 and into the future of gaming. How can this be our future? <laughs> this is terrible! Don't get ahead of me, my little remnants of a prison shower clog. Animators have painstakingly slowed down every frame so gamers could truly appreciate the fine mahogany craftsmanship. But unfortunately, they had to replace the delicate grains with glitches. Hedgehog killing glitches. Whoa! Not to say that the deficit of adequate controls and aiming hasn't taken out more furballs than the Turks during World War I. They have. Yeah. Oh, and the camera. That swinging heifer unable to locate a solitary enemy on the screen. Go ahead, locate the boss. <laughs> Don't look towards Eggman's insidious devices to handle your toe tag. It's the falling tower hidden by the camera that kills you in the end. No! At times, you can almost catch a glimmer of what next-gen Sonic could have been through the higher quality cutscenes. Not that they're all of highest caliber. Okay, you be careful, Tails. Or help make any sense of the story. His power can change time and even manipulate the fabric of time itself. And the barely legal furry undertones tend to stand out, especially if you do this. I'm so glad that you came. Despite what you think, Sonic is not about losing the princess, saving the princess, losing the princess, going back to town, saving the princess, seeing how fast an underage girl can pick matted blue hair out of her teeth, and dramatic pause. It's about the people. Huh? Helping the ten or so people in this sparsely populated Duplo city. 
Like this good citizen. I accept the task and... Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and we're back. And she's telling me what I already know and... What? Were you hoping to see more shadow riding around a car? Silver missing every throw or hours of my life wasted just pushing forward? So here's the puzzle. Obviously the number five is missing. I make my selection and... The loading screen is the mortar that keeps this house of Usher together. After leaving a city, before the boss fight, after you die, between cutscenes, before the results, after the results. Hold on, where was I? After the girl, and way after any redeeming quality may have been leached out of the series by some of the most uninspiring environments, shoddy controls, and degenerate use of the same stages over and over again by characters even less defined than a Rorschach test. That's why we're giving Sonic the Hedgehog for the Xbox 360. What? These are high-end scores. A one out of five. Ring collection on its own? Boring. But high-speed ring collection is very nice. I am fundamentally distrustful of Sonic, though, because hedgehogs are un-American. There are no hedgehogs here. Why do you think that's true? Hmm? They hate our freedom? Precisely. Hedgehogs are found in Europe, New Zealand, and Northern Asia. All of your hotbeds of socialist thought. You think hedgehogs are communist sleeper agents just waiting to destroy capitalism and liberty? Them and the trade unions. Up next, Tony Hawk Downhill Jam on X-Play. Crap, I'm such a cool tomboy look. It's got to go. You're in G-Force video game mashup. More X-Play is up next. Some people start slumming as a social thing, you know? I probably wouldn't do it by myself. That was mine. Slumming stands for sticking leeches on myself. Leeches? Yeah, leeches. I don't get it. I've had to confiscate all this. It's a problem. It's like you hear people talking about slumming over the weekend. It's yeah. hard not to get into it. Between my two phone bills, it's probably about $60 a month. About $150. Probably 100 bucks a month. With Vonage, it's just $24.99 a month for unlimited local and long distance. Call now and get one month free, including free calls to the U.S., Canada, Puerto Rico, and Europe. And all the cool features you could ever want are included. Over 20 in all. That's a savings of up to 50% on your phone bill. Call 1-800-866-1279. Attention drivers statewide. If you are insured with Allstate, Geico, State Farm, or any other car insurer, you may be overpaying by hundreds of dollars. Find out how to get immediate savings through AIG Auto Insurance. What would it take to get you to switch your car insurance? If we told you that you could save $350 a year, wouldn't you pick up the phone? Start dialing, because you could save that much. People who switched from GEICO saved around $359. From Allstate, $416. Your savings could be higher, like this driver who switched, or this one. And no other company gives you AIG security advantage that helps keep you safe on the road and away from home. Immediate savings available through AIG Auto Insurance. Call for a free rate quote today. Call 1-800-709-7912 for a free rate quote. You could save hundreds of dollars. That number again is 1-800-709-7912. Call now or visit AIGauto.com. Millions of Americans have made HydroxyCut the number one selling weight loss product because it works. I'm Jessica from Montana and I lost 22 pounds fast with HydroxyCut. I'm Dr. John Marshall. I lost 29 pounds and five and a half inches off my waist using HydroxyCut. I strongly recommend it, both as a new doctor and someone who used it with fantastic results. I'm Stacy from Wisconsin, and I lost 44 pounds with HydroxyCut. It works really fast. Get yours at buyhydroxycut.com, Supercenters, GNC, Walgreens, and fine retailers everywhere. Tonight on Attack of the Show. Gears of War has a new multiplayer mode, and Morgan Webb has all the details in Game Break. And wondering why the ladies love the dudes who treat them like crap? The answer can always be found in your pants. It's Attack of the Show, tonight at 7 and 11 p.m. Eastern. Born during the Scandinavian Civil Wars, it's Adam Sessler and Kristen Holt. Welcome back to X-Play. Morgan's gone, I'm hosting. And that's what life's about. Change, leaves turning from green to gold, caterpillars turning into butterflies, and young, sexy, extreme athletes discovering that 1987 was 20 years ago, and they now have 15-year-old sons and are, in fact, ancient. 
Adam, of course, means Tony Hawk, the dean of professional skateboarding and the namesake of our next game, Tony Hawk Downhill Jam. Who's ready to slap on the pads of a Brodeo clown? Who's up for a skate in the bro glow? The dude cube. <laughs> Tony's pockets are light again, and he can't wait to skate with you. Ollie Ollie Oxen Free, the hawk is back. <laughs> hey, Tony, what urethaned fueled tales of board dumb do you have for us this time? We've so missed that ear slandering, giggling green chatter leaked in plumes by you and your fellow vanguards of velocity. Tony Hawk Downhill Jam launches into the sky wide yonder on the wings of we, taking a slightly different approach from the Hawks of yore. The title boots its previous obsession with cartoonish mission types for downhill thrills. Taking a cue from street racing titles like Burnout and Need for Speed, it's all about the clock or knocking down pedestrians for points. You'll tribe with a predictable pack from Skate Nation's punky collective consciousness. Anthony does achieve stratospheric excess, much like the brain-swirling heights of titles like Excite Truck and SSX. That certainly adds a fruit fly's lifespan of interest, but too many other features in the title cause you to hurl tedium into a porcelain urn. Clothes, boards, and character design continue to take a bow, but these days applause is generally light, as you've seen them all before. Sombrero, do hilarious. Many of the challenges within the game are brief. Environments are tight and become all too similar all too quickly. The tricks are always fun, but if you have a degree in Tony's digital bag of stunts, then you won't find anything particularly sweet about his fancy footin'. Downhill Jam does utilize the Wii controller, but it's not as breath relieving as you might expect. <laughs> Tilt steering and a shake and wake feature that resets your fallen planker are really all that's on the menu with Tony Hawk's entree into Nintendo's next gen. Add to the Hawk's fading glory the generic soundtrack. It's a pile of predictably putrid faux punk blended with tiresome suburban rap. The good thing about the soundtrack? <laughs> you can turn it off. You can also shut these clowns up. Man, I can't remember what anything is called anymore. Hmm, what if? It's time to stop talking. Uh, Make it harder. Mm -hmm. Let me finish. <laughs> do it. Or do it well. Downhill Jam has a bad camera, confining levels, brief challenges, and basically a lot of the same stuff you've played in other hot games. This series desperately needs new wheels. And no, Anthony, we're not haters. We're just looking for a better skater. A two. Corrupt power and privilege is a drag. Out of five. That's really unfortunate. I had high hopes that the Wii would bring a new dimension to skateboarding and snowboarding games. They're all about free and creative movement, but the Tony Hawk games just don't seem to have much innovation left in them. All right, EA, please bring me an SSX game that shows Tony Hawk how to do extreme sports on the Wii the right way. All right, let us now find moral certainty through the ancient process of the X-Play replay. Castlevania Portrait of Ruin got a 4 out of 5 for more Castlevania RPG goodness, even though the co-op wasn't as good as we'd hoped. 1701 AD got a 4 out of 5 for lovely graphics and depth of gameplay. Sonic the Hedgehog got a 1 out of 5 for terrible controls, characters, and so much other crap. And Tony Hawk Downhill Jam got a 2 out of 5 for bad graphics, bad controls, and a namesake extreme athlete who was born in the Johnson administration. Speaking of things we'd hoped were in the past, it's time for Video Viewer Mail. Hi guys, this is Josh from San Francisco. And I was wondering when they release you from reviewing games at the end of the day, what are the games you play? Thank you, Joshua. Well, over the past two weeks, I've been finishing Rainbow Six Vegas, and I just got Lost Planet, and that looks like it could do a pretty good job of sucking up a few weeks. And then, then they just released the new Gears of War maps, and you know I love me some Gears of War. And no, I will not tell you what my gamer tag is. And what about you, Chris? Ever since December, it's been all about the Wii for me. I've been Wii bowling a lot. Well, Wii Sports is very easy. You just pick up and you're throwing a ball. Mm, are you saying I only play easy games? No. Okay, well, I've also been digging on Excite Truck and Madden. Remember to set your TiVos for February 5th because X-Play is about to start a new tradition that will reinvent the art of the possible. 
Wow, what a clue riddle plug, Kristen. If you like more of that cryptic kind of speech, stick around because another episode of X-Play starts now. Today.